नमस्ते वेलकम टू माय चैनल इन दिस वीडियो आई एम गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट अ कंप्लीट मेथड टू रीड नवांश थिंग दैट आई एम गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट टुडे इज नोन बाय द नेम ऑफ भृगु नंदी नाड़ी दो बट इट इज नॉट ओनली भृगु नंदी नाड़ी और इट इज नॉट भृगु नंदी नाड़ी Rather, it is my understanding of the principles of Prabhu Nandi Nadi. And personally speaking, I think that the principles of Prabhu Nandi Nadi should be used in Navamsha Cha. Why? Because of the making of Navamsha Cha. Because of the reason, if you closely look at how the Navamsha Cha is calculated, you will get to know that all the Rashi's which fall in prime. of a particular rashi gets automatically connected in a navamsha because of this particular reason i believe that all the principles of nadi astrology should be seen in navamsha why i am saying so i will explain in the end of the video right now we just jump to the principles i will be using the horoscope of swami vivekananda to elaborate the principles right and this is a full fledged complete system which i am proposing to you and i have selected few rules from nadi gurugrandi nadi and presenting it to you there and before you apply it all the rules needs to be clearly understood point 1 point 2 it is to be completely decided in the navamsha right so you are not supposed to like not supposed to i will not say you are supposed to see all the principles and their functioning and their working in navamsha itself so coming to rule number 1 planets in trine form a connection with each other now there is one more stuff generally in bhrugunandi nadi they don't use house lordship but i will use house lordships in my per personal practice i have found that house lordship should also be used in nadi astrology otherwise you may get misguided okay so the first principle is planets in prime form a connection so the planet in first house fifth house and ninth house of the navamsha chart should be taken as conjoint together planet in the second house 6th house and 10th house of the navamsha chart should be taken as conjoined together planet in third house 7th house and 11th house of the navamsha chart should be taken as conjoined together and planet in the fourth house 8th house and 12th house of the navamsha chart should be taken as conjoined together while we are analyzing it we will be using the natural significations of the planet as well as the traits that plan that a particular planet gains by owning houses in for horoscopes one thing i have to be extremely clear here <clears throat> suppose i am looking at a conjunction of three planets let let's do with the help of example itself this is the horoscope of swami vivekananda i use uh, capricorn ascendant for swami vivekananda and not scorpio ascendant and not sagittarius ascendant generally people use sagittarius ascendant but i am of the opinion that swami vivekananda should be capricorn ascendant and this opinion is because i myself am initiated from the ramakrishna mission and i know the real horoscope that the sagittarius ascendant horoscope is wrong coming to this particular thing we are just we are going to check navamsha only right so keep our complete eyes on the navamsha now if you see the navamsha chart here venus moon and jupiter are in the second sixth and the 10th house so these three planets venus moon and jupiter should be treated as they are conjoined now you have to understand one particular thing here the degrees play a very important role out of the and i am taking the degrees of d1 chart only i am not taking the degrees of d9 i am taking the normal degrees not the degrees of navamsha okay venus is 6 degree moon is 16 degree and jupiter is 3 degree jupiter is the 
lowest in degree planet, six degree, higher than Jupiter is Venus and higher than Venus is Moon. So the connection will be formed like Jupiter is connected to Venus and Venus is connected to Moon. In this particular way, the combination will form. Now, what does Venus indicates? First of all, Venus indicates marriage. Now, there is one thing that is very specific. Before you delve deeper into it and make the combinations and make predictions accordingly, one thing you need to understand is that the Rashi, when we will go to the next technique, you will understand the importance of what I am saying. But let me tell it beforehand, the Rashi plays a very important and crucial role. Here in the horoscope of Swami Vivekananda Ji, Venus is in Aquarius in D9. Aquarius is a Rashi of Saturn. This gives, this makes Saturn connected to Venus or rather Venus connected to Saturn. Now, as you know, Saturn indicates delay, etc. We generally say that Saturn indicates delay but not denial. However, for the case of marriage, Saturn cannot be considered as a good planet. Saturn, because it indicates the ascetic tendencies, asceticism, spirituality, etc. Is you heard it right? Saturn is the karga for it, but not other planets. Because it indicates spirituality, asceticism, sannyas, etc. The connection of Saturn to Venus in Namamsha chart can either delay the marriage or can completely deny it. In the case of denial, Saturn will rather take the planet, Saturn will rather take the person in the spiritual path. This is what it exactly does to Swami Vivekananda Ji. Venus, if you look at degrees, meets moon. Right? Venus is 6 degree. Going further, Venus will make form a connection with moon. Mother of Swami Vivekananda Ji wanted Swami Ji to get married. There were talks of him getting married. And it is documented that once Swamiji had desire for some woman, he felt very bad about it. And to punish himself, he sat on a hot burning charcoal so that the thoughts of sexuality or rather say Kama Vasana doesn't come across him. Right. So why the thought of Kama Vasana is coming? Because Venus is going to conjoin with Moon in the Navamsha. Okay. Venus conjunct Moon or Venus in trying to Moon, where the degree of Venus is lesser as compared to the degree of Moon, makes a particular combination where in a normal horoscope one may commit extramarital affair, debauchery, etc. However, for the horoscope of Swami Vivekananda, because Venus is in the sign of Saturn, it takes him to spirituality and the rest is history. This moon further meets with Jupiter, right? Moon is 16 degree. There is no planet in trying to Venus, moon and Jupiter, which is higher in degrees to moon. So moon will meet the lowest degree planet. Right, Jupiter forming connection with Venus, Venus forming connection with Moon, Moon con forming connection with Jupiter as per the degree. Right, according to the degree, this is happening what I told you. <clears throat> now, looking at it, Jupiter indicates spirituality, etc. Venus is, Venus, the karaka of marriage, is meeting Moon, the karaka for emotions. As I just explained, Swamiji had a sexual thought. But both this moon and Venus, the thought of marriage meeting to the emotion is further meeting Jupiter, the spirituality. Hence, Vivekananda punished himself, sub subdued the sexual urge and 
took the path of spirituality now if you look further into it venus is the karaka for marriage and moon is the seventh lord so the marriage is coming to the seventh lord the desire of marriage is coming to the seventh lord but both these planets venus and moon are then going to jupiter the third lord of struggle and the 12th lord of loss specifically considering both the signs of jupiter one pisces in the third house and i am for house lordships i am referring to the natal chart the mool trikona sign of jupiter or say the more prominent sign of jupiter this is a standard astrological rule that planet gives the result of his mool trikona rashi because jupiter the mool trikona of jupiter falls in the 12th house of loss denial escaping not doing because of this particular reason this venus and moon meeting jupiter didn't fructify because jupiter is having his mool trikona rashi in the 12th house and in the end swami ji never married one more thing is prominent here <clears throat> using the same combination i think you have fairly understood what i am trying to say planets in trying to make a connection now take moon as a significator of mind moon as a significator of mind which is of 16 degree meets jupiter which is lowest degree in the time 3 degrees jupiter indicates the jupiter as in spirituality indicates shiva or the concept of soul and atman sun also does the same jupiter also does the same but sun have a particular type of ego aham brahmasmi kind of a concept whereas jupiter don't have an ego jupiter is more like devoted to the self moon meeting jupiter is an indicative that the mind of swami ji is more inclined towards meditation shiva which indicate sada shiva which is indicated by jupiter the mind of swami ji is more inclined towards meditation shiva and self purification meditations on the self etc what we do in advait vedanta thakur swami ramkrishna paramahans who was the guru of swami vivekanand was a idol worshipper he was a he was devotedly into bhakti mar however vivekanand ji despite being a very close student of ramkrishna paramahans never got into the bhakti marg he always remained in the marg of devotion dedication self inquiry and meditative practices one two days before his death he was found worshiping goddess in an idol form that was just before his death once again this particular tendency of swami ji of not accepting the methods of his guru swami ramkrishna paramahans and rather taking his own approach of meditation self improvement is once again indicated by the fact that moon the karaka of mind is meeting jupiter the karaka of self soul meditation etc one more point from this particular combination you will be able to understand moon is also the karaka for attachment jupiter is in the sign of libra jupiter indicates guru libra indicates wife so the wife of the guru swami ji was also very much attached to the wife of ramkish paramahansa sarada mata even there is a small story that when swami ji wanted to go outside to give the speech 
in this world conference he went and took permission from sarada once again indicating that his relationship because moon is going to meet jupiter this is and jupiter is in the sign of libra jupiter indicates guru libra indicates female woman spouse the spouse of guru is an indicative that swami ji was not only connected to thakur but he was also equally loved by sharda mata as well one more thing if you see here jupiter is the karaka for jiva human beings in general human beings in common moon is meeting jupiter swami ji when he established the ramkrishna mission ramkrishna haven't established the ramkrishna mission swami ji established the ramkrishna mission and swami ji kept the logo as atmano mokshartam jagad hitaycha salvation for the person and for the benefit of the world swami ji was a strong advocate of worshiping human as god nar seva narayan seva doing service to humanity doing service to mankind doing service to people is a service to god was propagated by swami vivekananda once again indicated by this particular trait that this moon the karaka of mind is going to meet or forming a natural trinal connection with jupiter the karaka of jiva human and humanity coming to the second aspect of it looking at the third house eight looking sorry looking at the fourth house eighth house and twelfth house we find three planets saturn mercury and sun saturn is 12 degrees mercury is 11 degrees and sun is 28 degrees so we can say mercury is meeting sun sorry mercury is meeting saturn mercury lower in degree 11 degrees meeting the planet higher in degree saturn 12 degree and then saturn is meeting with sun and sun meets with mercury so the connection will be mercury saturn sun repeat mercury mercury is the karaka for intelligence and education specifically mercury is the karaka for education right from the time when swami ji was in his school completing his studies he was visiting saints was interested in spirituality and was inquiring about spirituality soul self self realization self realization and all these things why this is happening because mercury is making connection with saturn saturn is the karaka for spirituality etc i have already explained it and mercury because it is the karaka for education the quest of swami ji for spirituality started right in his college days this saturn is meeting sun degreeally okay saturn is 12 degree sun is 28 degree saturn sun relationship is not a good relationship from the biography of swami vivekanand we know that swami vivekanand never had a very cordial or good relationship with their parents specifically their father also saturn is the karaka for death and sun is the karaka for father the father of swami vivekanand ji died quite early passed early which is indicated by saturn the karaka of death making a trilateral connection with sun the karaka of father right another thing is rahu in the first house and mars in the fifth house of the navamsha forms a connection rahu is 22 degree and mars is 5 degree we can say that mars is meeting rahu rahu is a catalyst rahu is a transformer he transform things and mars is the karaka for aggression swami ji right from his childhood was quite an aggressive child but because mars degreeally meets rahu because rahu is in trying to mars 
in his later years swami ji transformed his aggression transformation seen through rahu swami ji transformed his aggression and used it for his benefit he lowered down his aggression kept his aggression in his mind and displayed it when it was necessary so a transformation of anger is seen through the connection that mars and rahu is making in the navamsha cha also if you see mercury is the lord of the ninth house which indicates father as i have explained earlier mercury meets saturn got degreeally in navamsha once again indicative that the father mercury as the ninth lord is meeting with death saturn because the saturn is also the lagna lord mercury is the ninth lord it is ninth lord making a trinal connection with the lagna lord which makes swami ji very fortunate he was actually very fortunate if you compare swami ji to other students of thakur other disciples of thakur swami ji have been very fortunate first point the connection between the ninth house and the ascendant the connection between saturn and mercury in navamsha also indicates foreign travel for the sake of dharma indicated through the ninth house which also happened also the ninth lord connected to the lagna lord mercury connected to saturn in navamsha being situated in the same rashi is again indicative of that after the death of father ninth house there is a great change in personality and thinking of the native signified by the ascendant saturn is the second lord also sun is the eighth lord saturn is in trying to sun in navamsha they form a natural connection saturn is lower in degree sun is higher in degrees which means saturn is approaching sun it makes a connection between sun and saturn and sun basically not sun and saturn because one is the second lord and another is the eighth lord swami ji was never able to make or like he was a sanyasi so there is no question of saving money at all but there is a very small anecdote <clears throat> once swami ji was when his father died swami ji was desperately looking for a job he went to ramkrishna paramhans he went to thakur thakur told him okay i will help you i will talk to mother she will come to the idol and will listen to your wishes and whatever you ask her she will give you thakur did as told and then thakur did as promised and then told vivekanand that i have told mother now you go to the temple and ask her anything vivekanand went there came back thakur asked him did you ask for anything he said no as soon as i went near the image i was not able to ask anything for myself i only asked for the betterment of humanity etc thakur said okay not an issue i will give you another chance i will go to the temple again talk to the mother again she will again come to the idol and you have a second chance go and ask her anything thakur did as <clears throat> promised and once again told vivekananda that now i have told mother you go to the temple and ask her anything swami vivekananda went in front of the idol in the dakshineshwar kali temple again but was not able to ask anything. once right he was disturbed because of money prospects and he was desperately looking for a job he got two options but he was not able to ask anything for himself once again he was not anything for he was not able to ask anything for himself he was not able to ask money or a job once again indicated by the fact that the second lord saturn and eighth lord sun is forming a triangle connection in navamsha which makes the person not think which which generally makes a person poor or not think about their money or finances and because swami ji was a sanyasi it rather worked in his favor right <clears throat> this is rule number 
द रूल नंबर टू इज अ फर्दर इलेबोरेशन ऑफ द सेम रूल बेस्ड ऑन दिस ट्राइन कॉन्सेप्ट that we have just learned we know how things will happen right venus is making a connection with moon moon is making a connection with jupiter that is all okay but you can say ki sir fine you say venus is connected to moon venus is the karaka for marriage and moon is the karaka for emotion also taken as a benefic planet then why swami ji was not married we are not convinced by your logic so there is another rule which says that now this is my own interpretation of it it is a nadi rule nadi teachers and nadi practice practitioners may use it differently this is their this is their take i will tell you my methods how i do it and once again one more differentiation is that nadi people generally don't use house lordship while doing nadi and they make this trinal connection in d1 chart i use house lordships openly as i have already the planet in the 12th to any planet navamsha i am only talking about navamsha the planet in 12th to any planet gives the support 12th house consider it like a cushion if your cushion is good you will get a good sleep if your cushion is not good you can keep snoring throughout the night which may lead into a bad sleep disturbed sleep next day when you wake up you will not feel energetic etc so planet in 12th to a planet is the support of the planet that support have to be good that support have to be good for the planet to properly function if that support is not good then problems will happen another thing is the planet in second to the planet under consideration indicates that what is going to come next once you have got the support or not got the support whatever you say once you get the support or not get the support that doesn't matter but what happens after that what happens after the fructification of the result or achievement of the result that is indicated by the things in the second house taking the example of sleep 12th house indicates the cushion if the cushion is good you will get a good night sleep if the cushion is not good you will snore your good night sleep will not be okay you will be disturbed etc etc planet in the second house is what you see first after waking up if it is a good planet then you see good things when you wake up your whole day is good you feel energetic loved and all these things happen and if there is a bad planet in second house it is like you wake up and the first thing you read is a bad news or a bad a bad news on your mobile etc your day is spoiled your mood is ruined now you will not enjoy anything you will just wait for the day to pass you will be frustrated for the whole day etc etc this is how it should be understood coming once again back to the horoscope of swami vivekanand and specifically you know in the cases of marriage etc child etc this is very important the 12th house is the support so as a standard rule i can tell you if there is a malefic behind venus or if there is a malefic behind the 7th lord in the navamsha the support which comes from the 12th house is weak hence the person may find difficulty in getting married may find difficulty in getting a bride or a groom etc same scenario if there is a malefic in 12th from the 5th lord the person will face difficulties in getting a child if the malefic is in the 2nd from venus or the 7th lord one doesn't feel problems in getting married but one feels problem after getting married. what type of problem which problem is decided by the planet one thing you cannot forget here that is the nature of the rashi 
in the trinal connection i am not talking about rashi at all in 159 of a planet if there is another planet it makes a connection otherwise not doesn't matter in 212 of the planet if there is no planet in 212 to a planet in that particular case you are supposed to take the lord of the rashi and supposed to take the nature and behavior of the rashi <clears throat> Coming to the horoscope of Swami Vivekananda, let's try to analyze Venus as the karka of marriage. Twelfth from Venus, you find Rahu. This gives him difficulties in getting married. Rahu is not a good planet. Specifically, this Rahu is in Capricorn Navamsha, which makes this Rahu further more bad and deadly. And twelfth from Venus is also Guli, a great malefic. Three malefic factors behind behind Venus in the twelfth house of Venus. First is Rahu, another is the bad sign of Capricorn, and third is Gulik. Does indicate that there are a lot of problems in Swam in for Swami Ji in getting married. If you try to do the same thing using the seventh Lord Moon. you will find 12th house from the 7th lord moon is conjoined by mars which is a malefic planet once again indicating that getting married is not easy for this person and because there is a malefic influence in 12th from venus also and 12th from 7th lord also in navamsha it may completely deny the marriage also which it have actually done now looking at second from venus marriage was denied because of rahu capricorn and guli in 12th from venus that's okay but what happens after the marriage is completely denied what happens after that for that we see the second from venus that is the sign of jupiter pisces right and pisces is a sign that indicates spirituality jupiter also indicates spirituality atman moksha dharma and multiple things what happened after the marriage was denied to swami ji though he he never wanted to get married so whatever way you say it what happened after marriage was denied to swami ji is he took on the spiritual path indicated by pisces in the second house from venus if you do the same analysis from the seventh lord moon you find that mars in 12th from the 7th lord moon denies the marriage as it is a malefic it gives difficulties in marriage also second from the moon is ketu which indicates spirituality and this ketu is in the sign of cancer watery sign which also indicates spirituality once again and cancer rashi is the exaltation of jupiter once again indicating spirituality so from the both the factors venus the karaka for mar venus the karaka for marriage and seventh lord the planet who rules marriage when you analyze the second house and 12th house from both these planets in navamsha it is extremely clear that swami vivekananda is not getting married and after the denial he is taking on to the spiritual path and the spiritual journey just to summarize the rule if the 12th from venus or 12th from 7th lord there is a malefic marriage may get delayed if there is a malefic in both 12th from venus and 12th from the 7th lord the marriage may also be denied right at least one factor have to be good for only delay to happen if there is no malefic in 12th from venus or 12th from 7th lord all okay no problem timely marriage fine malefic only in 12th from venus or only in 12th from the 7th lord marriage will get delayed malefic in both 12th from venus and 12th from 7th lord and i am talking of completely navamsha as i have told you earlier forget the natal chart only see navamsha i am using natal chart only to take the degree of planets and the lordship of planet that's all right so if there is malefic in Twelfth house from Venus also, twelfth house from seventh lord also. The marriage may completely get denied until or unless some very strong yoga is present there in the horoscope, which can at any given point of time alter the particular thing that I am telling you. The methods 
that I am explaining right now is a shortcut method which is supposed to work 98% of the times. However, don't see horoscope like a blind person. If there are other strong yogas present, you cannot ignore that. And other strong yogas like the 7th Lord Vargottam, 7th Lord Retrograde, etc. These other good yogas may always alter this particular result and make the chart fall in the 2% rare exceptional case. Right. So never practice astrology with the closed eyes, open eyes. Practice you are supposed to do. Okay. The same thing if you see Venus is the 10th Lord. We have already analyzed Venus. 12th from Venus is Rahu, Gulik and the malefic sign Capricorn, which is also exaltation of another malefic Mars. Whichever planets get exalted in a particular Rashi, that planet always remains connected to that Rashi. Doesn't matter if the planet is placed in that Rashi or not. Because Venus is the 10th Lord. We have already analyzed the 12th house from Venus. It is very clear that Swami Ji, Vivekananda Ji faced many difficulties in getting a job as well. Right, The same factor because Venus is the 10th Lord. And because he was not able to take up on that job, he took upon what? The second from Venus, the sign Pisces. The Rashi of Jupiter, he took on the, he took, he went towards the path of spirituality. Right? Now, another thing is that Saturn is the Lagna Lord. The 12th house from Saturn is the sign of Pisces, very good Rashi. Plotted by Venus, another good planet. Sorry, lauded by Jupiter, another good planet, exaltation, ratio of Venus, another good planet. The starting life of Swami Vivekananda was very good. He was good in studies, very excellent, loved by their loved by his family, got everything, etc. Got everything in his family. When he became an adult, what happens after that? What happens after the person has become adult? We see second house from Saturn. Second house from Saturn, we find Mars, which is a malefic. As Swamiji became young, came to the young age, his father died, leading him into a troubled situation. And after the death of his father, from that time to the taking of sannyas, roaming all over India, collecting money from people, going to foreign lands, giving a speech, coming back, establishing the Ramakrishna mission and everything. Till his death, he has to struggle for many things. This is because Mars is in the second house, the future. Mars is in the future house, the second house from the Lagna Lord Saturn. Also, very minutely, so that you don't miss the point, I will highlight here that second from Saturn, the Lagna Lord, which indicates the person, the self, the karma, etc. Second from it is Mars, which is the karka for land, property, fights, disputes, etc. Indicating that it was the duty, responsibility, or rather say it was fated in the horoscope of Swamiji that he will make many buildings. Ramakrishna Mission Centers. He will make many buildings in his life. Why? Because the house of future, the second house from the Lagna Lord Navamsha is having Mars, which is the Karka for property and building. So you can just take a small one-liner rule, right? And you know, there are many such one-liners rule that I can post every day or make a small video on every day. And you know, these things will never end. My focus is to teach you a bigger principle. See, I am not teaching, I, I don't generally teach you a technique. I teach you a principle. Technique and principle is very different. As a technique, you can simply say, take the Lagna Lord in D9. Second, the Rashi in, check, check the Rashi in second to Lagna Lord in D9. Or check the planet in second to Lagna Lord in D9. And that indicates what the person is supposed to do in this life or what the person is supposed to make in this life. 
this will be a one liner rule one liner technique but my friend techniques fail miserably if you don't know the complete principle hence my target in all my courses in all my teachings in all my videos also my target is always to teach you a principle not a technique right principle is a bigger thing the right. technique is a teacher principle is the principle <laughs> the principle is bigger is what i am saying saying you okay as <clears throat> one more thing is there this is the last four for today okay though i had five rules you know i had five rules to teach in this class in this video right this is not a class in this video i was supposed to teach you five rules but i think the video is getting very lengthy so i will teach you three rules only in the last class i told you in the nakshat navamsh course i am going to teach 100 techniques and i wrote 105 techniques three two techniques i have given you in the previous class and other techniques i will give you in the upcoming videos now the total techniques that i am supposed to teach in the forthcoming navamsha course have exceeded 110 techniques. how it have exceeded overnight the thing is i don't read a book and teach you from a book generally what happens na the astrologer or the teacher will read a book himself will call out four five principles and will teach that in the course in that case what happens if they have told i will teach you five techniques they can also only teach you five techniques the only problem with me is i know everything myself i have done all these researches way back in 2016 17 18 those years and all this research are deeply embedded into my mind so overnight from 100 techniques i can make 150 techniques i just have to stress a bit on my mind on what researches i was doing in 2016 or 2015 and it will give me 20 25 new rules to teach right so increases the content for the benefit of the students those who will enroll in the navamsha course which is starting from the 21st of february we are going to have five classes each class will be around 2 and 2 2 to and a half hour long so it will be around uh, 10 10 to 12 hours of teaching 10 to 12 hours of learning along with this i am also going to give written content i am making a pdf to share it to students and these classes will be very extensive will cover more than 100 techniques to predict through navamsha time events through time events through navamsha giving remedies through navamsha answering prashna through navamsha finding muhurta through navamsha all these things will be completely covered in the course i am an astrologer who knows about all branches and all aspect of astrology generally what happens people only know predictive astrology they don't know mundane astrology they don't know prashna they don't know muhurta electional astrology that's not the case with me i know complete astrology i have learned complete astrology way back right then only i came to teaching and consultations however <clears throat> coming back to my point we have we know planet in 159 makes a connection okay that connection makes breaks disrupt that is a combination that is a promise right planet in trine 159 is a promise we have learned that then we have learned planet in 210 uh, sorry planet in 12th house and second house planet in the second house indicates what is the future once you have achieved the thing planet in 12th house indicate what is the disturbance or obstacle in your path in your path in achieving that particular thing now comes the progression now this is known through different names someone said i did a research on it published a published a few things over it then people started claiming that it is also given in bhugu nandi nadi but in reality it is given in astrological classic right and all this format of astrology na kp astrology nadi astrology whatever you say it is all culled out from what we traditional astrologers or vedic astrologers call as refer as astrological classics these are all the principles from classics only if you don't believe my word that means you don't have much astrological understanding or knowledge however coming back to my point 
Now suppose <clears throat> marriage, let's take marriage. What is in the store for marriage is indicated by the planets which fall in trine to Venus or seventh Lord in Navamsha makes the promise. The problems and obstacles before marriage in, is seen in filth from Venus or the seventh Lord. What happens after getting married? What changes you have after getting married is seen through. What changes your life gets after getting married is seen through through the second house from the Venus and the seventh Lord. Now, the third point is how the marital life progress. How the marital life progress. You know, there are stages about it. How it is progress. This you have to check in the Kendras. Kendras from the planet. Whichever planet you are considering doesn't matter. Right. Kendras, it have to be particularly seen in the Kendras. The order of Kendra is simple. First, you check the 10th house. Then you check the fourth house. And in the end, you check the seventh house. I will give you two examples. Two examples from the same horoscope though. This is the horoscope of Swamiji, Swami Vivekananda. Let's talk about Lagna. The person, native, self, his personality, etc. It is indicated by the Lagna Lord Saturn. 10th from Saturn. In the Kendra preference, what I told you, first 10th house, then 4th house, then 7th house. You don't disrupt this order. Hmm? Don't disrupt this order. Swami Vivekananda as a person, seen through Saturn in Navamsha. 10th from Saturn is Rahu. Swami Vivekananda as a child is very rebellious, indicated by Rahu. Not an easy believer, indicated by Rahu. Questioning everything, Indicated by Rahu. Trend setter. Indicated by Rahu. And different kind of a personality. Indicated by Rahu. It also, Rahu also makes the person erratic. Rational. And gives a lot of aggression. That was there in the nature of Swamiji. He was very brilliant. He used to question everything. Even he questioned the. Even he questioned his guru. Thakur. He tested his guru a lot. He questioned his guru a lot. Strongly indicated by this particular Rahu, which is situated in 10th from the Lagna. After 10th house, the progression goes to the 4th house. In the 4th house from the Lagna Lord, you find Ketu in the sign of Cancer, which is exaltation of Jupiter and the sign of Moon. He meets his Guru. Cancer, watery sign, indicates spirituality. After that, he meets his Guru. His Guru, who is very much attached to him and loves him like a mother. It is recorded and documented that Swami Ramakrishna Paramahansa used to request Vivekananda to come to him. He used to make an heartly request. His name was Narain. Narain, Narain he used to call him. Swami uh, Thakur. He used to say, Swamiji, you promise me that you will come next Sunday. He used to plead a lot in front of Vivekananda. For him to come and join him, come and see him whenever he gets free, whenever he gets a holiday. Right? Whenever he gets some time. Indicated by Ketu being in a watery emotional sign, Cancer in the fourth from Saturn, that Swamiji is getting a guru. The sign of Cancer, exaltation of Jupiter. Swamiji is getting a guru who loves him like a mother. And nourishes him like his own child. Any mistake Narendra Nath Dutta, as known as Swami Vivekananda, did, Ramakrishna was always forgiving of it. And what happens in the end after the 10th house and 4th house, we are supposed to take the 7th house from the Saturn and the 7th house from the Saturn is Jupiter. What happened after that? After the death of his Guru, Swamiji took on the mission and the task of his Guru. Indicated by Jupiter in 7th from Saturn. What he needs to do for his Guru, what was the wishes and desires of his Guru and how to execute it. He discussed it with Sardama, the mother of Thakur, sorry, the wife of Thakur. Indicated by Jupiter being in the sign of Libra, which indicates marriage woman, the woman of the Guru, the wife of the Guru. 
and after that in the end he made that formula of serving humanity is serving narayan nar seva narayan seva atmano mukshartam jagad hitaycha was the last thing that he did self inquiry meditation the thought of advait vedanta of lifting one's own self through meditation and spiritual practices serving the humanity nation and the god kind was the last resolution that swami ji did this is the thing that he did in the end the last thing that he did in the end lived by left this world for the heavenly abode indicated by jupiter being in seventh from the lagna now the same analysis you can do for mercury taking 10th from mercury is rahu so swami ji was a non believer kind of a person due to his studies and the background that he had in studies then comes the fourth ketu his ideas in studies is his ideas his scientific ideas are then shattered and seventh from it is jupiter from a non believer science student he becomes a complete believer and involves himself into yogic practices so the same analysis can be done from mercury also what i will want to show you is moon moon is the seventh lord 10th from moon is no planet no change fourth from moon is no planet i am just checking now i'm just to remind you okay the fourth from moon is no planet in the end the seventh from moon is sun sun the karaka for spirituality soul upliftment thinking about the world society etc right so seventh from moon is sun now we have already analyzed the marriage prospects of swami ji and we find that he is not going to get married but everyone have a particular what you say everyone have a mission in life that is also seen through the seventh lot mission right what you are supposed to do what you are supposed to achieve is the lagna lot what will be your mission is the seventh house seventh from moon is sun right seventh from moon is sun 10th and 4th from moon is no planet he doesn't get married and rather takes the path of spirituality indicated by sun the karaka for soul and atma in the sign of sagittarius the sign of spirituality because it is the bull trigon of jupiter in the 7th to moon so if you try to see the analysis of uh, marriage through different aspects of the same technique that i have taught you in this video if you try to see the aspects of marriage in the horoscope of swami ji using all the different things that i have taught you in this video itself it will be extremely clear to you that this person is not supposed to get married and he is supposed to have a spiritual life a spiritual advancement and spiritual things are there on his way i had to teach you three more rules regarding the same thing but for the time constraint i am dropping the idea maybe some other day we can continue it right as i have told earlier these are the nadi concepts generally it comes from bhagunandi nadi but it is a debatable topic someone will say no this technique is not from bhagunandi nadi that technique is not from bhagunandi nadi some people will be like yeah, you are doing a wrong explanation etc etc i am sorry pardon me this is my own experience this is how i have seen it working this is how it works this is how it is supposed to work right and because as i have already cleared all the nadi principles come from vaidik astrology only this is my understanding of vaidik astrology that this have to be done in this particular way only right this is my own understanding of it right so and i'm pretty sure that no one will have a problem now why i have told you in the starting now i have told you in the starting that navamsha 
is connected to trines. The, and that's why I am using Bhrigunandi Nadi in Navamsha or the Nadi techniques in Navamsha. So basically, the Nadi forms a connection between 159, the planet in the same direction. Because first house, fifth house, and ninth house will indicate the same direction. If the first house is having Capricorn, Capricorn also indicates south. If first house is having Capricorn, fifth house will have Taurus, that also indicates south. Ninth house will have Virgo, that also indicates south. So generally, they will say it is the planet in the same direction. That's why they are making the connection. Generally, we apply it on the natal chart. But according to my understanding of astrology, it should be applied on Navamsha. And it gives better result when it is applied on Navamsha. But why? And you know, I also say one thing. Now, there are no houses in divisional chart. People generally don't understand. It's not their problem. I think I, I don't explain it. Just a small quick explanation because I know generally 80% of the people will not be interested in the explanation, but still, if you are, then check this. This is how the Navamsha is calculated for uh, horoscope. Suppose my ascendant is 13 degree 20 minute Aquarius. This 13 degree 20 minute comes in this not 13 degree, 20 minute, I'm sorry. It is supposed 13 degree, 13.00. 13.00 Aquarius. Now this particularly fourth Navamsha, my friend. Fourth Navamsha end at 13 degrees. Okay. Because I am born in Aquarius, my Lagna have to be in Capricorn 13.2 you see, you know, this particular line you are supposed to see. Let me highlight it. Huh? In front of Aquarius, it is Rashi number 10, Capricorn. So my Navamsh Lagna will be Capricorn. Now, because my ascendant is 13 degree Aquarius, the second house is supposed to be the 13 degree of Pisces. Now, according to the same table, 13 degree of Pisces should have Libra. Navamsha, right? Because it is Libra here. Now we do a mistake. When we make a Navamsha chart, now what we will do, we will take the Lagna degree and we'll calculate that, okay, Lagna is 13 degree, fourth Navamsha and set 13 degree, 20 minutes. So Lagna is Capricorn in Navamsha. And in the next houses of the D9 chart, you will write, first house you write Capricorn and second house you follow the order. You write Aquarius, Pisces, Aries, Taurus, January, etc. This is wrong. If you take Second house to be 13 degree Aquarius, 13 degree Pisces. If the Lagna is Aquarius, second house will be Pisces. If you take second house to be 13 degree Pisces, it will be Libra. The third house will be 13 degree Aries, it have to be Cancer. The fourth house will be 13 degree Taurus, it have to be Aries again. The fifth house will be 13 degree Gemini, it have to be Capricorn. The sixth house will be 13 degree Cancer, it have to be Libra. The seventh house will be 13 degree Leo, it have to be Cancer. The eighth house will be 13 degree Virgo, it have to be Aries again. The ninth house will be 13 degree Libra, it have to be Capricorn. The, the tenth house will be 13 degree Scorpio, it have to be Libra. The eleventh house is 13 degree Sagittarius, it have to be Cancer. And the twelfth house will be 13 degree Capricorn, it have to be Aries. Right? The degree which is falling in Lagna should fall into every house. I'm using an equal house division. If you don't use an equal house division, if you go and use anything else, Shripati, etc., Shripati, Bhavachali, Porifari, Rigomentus, anything, leave about this particular thing. This is somewhat logical. If you use other house division system, that will give you a separate midpoint for every Rashi. And then if you try to Divide Navamsha or any divisional chart based on it, you will never be able to find a correct answer. Right? So if you believe in divisional charts, you should stop stop believing in Chalit Chakra, Chalit horoscope. And if you believe in Chalit horoscope or Bhava horoscope, forget divisional charts. These two things don't fall in the same line. But the only problem is people have lost their mind. They don't know how to calculate things, etc. And you know, so just a show off of how poorly read they are or how poor is their knowledge. However, not going into this particular point. 
Now, why I am saying, see, this is the first house, Navamsha of the first house, Navamsha of the second house, third house, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh, and twelfth house. Navamsha of all these particular houses, this is. Now, try understand understanding a point. When you make a horoscope, when you calculate a Navamsha horoscope for 13 degree of Aquarius, what you will do? You will put Capricorn in the first house of Navamsha and other houses you will follow in the same order because the first house is Capricorn, second house have to be Aquarius, third house Pisces, fourth house Aries, etc. This have no base logic as seen through the table. According to the table, if you make, if there is a horoscope with 13 degree Aquarius ascendant, the first house of Navamsha should have Capricorn Rashi, second house of Navamsha should have Libra Rashi, third house of Navamsha should have Cancer Rashi, fourth house of Navamsha should have Aries Rashi, fifth house of Navamsha should have Capricorn Rashi once again as is very visible in this particular table. But that type of Navamsha chart neither you know of, neither have you ever imagined. Right, This type of Navamsha chart cannot be made. This is the particular reason I say there are no houses in a particular divisional chart. Right, This condition will only be satisfied when you use divisional charts like D12 and D60, where the division of the Rashi starts from the sign itself. However, there's an advanced topic. You may not be able to understand it right now, so I'm leaving. My major point, the basic point that I'm trying to make here is why I am saying you that planet in 159 in Navamsha is correlated, conjoined, or should be taken as conjoined together or sitting together. Why? Because if you see into this list, first house also have Capricorn, fifth house also falls into Capricorn, and ninth house also falls into Capricorn. So basically, first house of the D9 chart, fifth house of the D9 chart, and ninth house of the D9 chart basically should fall in the same ratio. Same goes with the second house of the Navamsha chart should be Libra, sixth house of the Navamsha chart should be Libra, and tenth house of the Navamsha chart should be Libra again. Again, falling into right. Third house of the Navamsha chart should be Cancer. Seventh house of the Navamsha chart should be Cancer. And eleventh house of the Navamsha chart should again be Cancer. The fourth house of the Navamsha chart have to be Aries. The eighth house of the Navamsha chart have to be Aries. And the twelfth house of the Navamsha chart have to be Aries once again. Just by the nature, framework, and calculation method of Navamsha chart, it is pretty clear that 159 houses of the Navamsha chart should basically fall in the same house if you calculate Navamsha chart with your mind open. See, India is not India. Generally, na, people are into hero worship. So they have a hero, they have an idol and they just follow everything that the hero says. But the thing is knowledge, the pursuit of knowledge can never be achieved through a hero worship. So when you apply your mind, this is the truth that no one can talk to you about. Because people can make videos on Navamsha. You know, nowadays it is 21st century. We are living in 2022. There are mobile astrology softwares and mobile computer, PC, tablet, whatnot. So people may teach you a whole lot of things about Navamsha where they themselves don't know how to calculate the Navamsha or even if they know, they never have thought what is wrong with it or why it is calculated this particular way. When you go deeper into it, when you go deeper into Navamsha, you cover the real crux. You cover the root of it. That's why. That's what I have tried explaining you in this video. I hope I'm pretty sure that you have enjoyed it. Enjoyed it. Leave a comment. Thank you for watching the video. Have a good day. Namaskar.